Alright, so I'm making this video because in my Winchester Lee video I incorrectly explained how the end block clips work and I haven't been able to get them to work yet. Hopefully I will at some point, but I'm just going to do a short video on how they're supposed to work and running one through a separate lower. So I'll just get this out of the way first. Obviously um, some of this or any of this difficulty could be due to what I'm using. I mean, I've got a 114-year-old gun. I have no idea if the magazine spring is, like, fine or if it's weak. It seems okay. Is something smooth? Is something not how it should be? You know, the ammo. I'm using Buffalo Arms uh, ammunition. And this is formed from 25-06 brass. Obviously, this isn't perfect 6mm Lee. You know, the the clips I'm using are SNS firearms reproductions. And, you know, obviously those may not be perfect. And even then, I remember reading somewhere in one of the documents that uh, they did have difficulties keeping the clip tension consistent. So, before I forget, that uh, Buffalo Arms ammo, it worked fine. I did get a bunch of, uh, well, a number of split necks. And I was kind of worried about that, so I went Googling around, and it seems like they don't really anneal their case necks like they should. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of other people saying the same thing, not only on six millimeter, but other cartridges as well. So just a heads up. All right. So in my last video, I incorrectly explained it as I thought the wire would just put tension on the cartridges and that would hold them into the clip. But the, in actuality, these aren't beveled on the rims, but the actual 6mm Lee original brass has a bevel on the edge of the rim, and the actual wire in these clips is thinner, and then it slopes up so that way it would grab around the bevel so it can't fall out of the clip. Now I did kind of a mediocre job but I tried to grind one out so you can see the curve isn't as sharp as probably it should be but the point is you would have your beveled rim and it would just be held in place Now these clips too, I've only used, I've only messed with one of them because that's going to be my test clip, but even then as you can see, sometimes some of them, oh it slides fine, then another one, it's going to just bind up completely. And that's not even, I don't think because of the bevel, I think that's just binding on the extractor cut on these. So once again, any of this could just be inconsistencies in the fact that I'm not using original ammo and it's slightly different or I'm not using original clips and they're slightly different but uh... so the point would be that you would have your your loop set up and you can see well you might not be able to see that the little rim edge would uh... hold what would be beveled on the rim on both sides, this I have only ground uh, one side, and then you would pop the loop, and it would just fold out into the gap, and you could just your shells would just slide out. Now, even with this grinding, which is actually maybe a little bit too loose, uh, I cannot get the actual clip to strip correctly. Just when it's in the gun, there's nothing holding it down, so it just goes up with all the ammo. Alright, so we've got our cases in here, and you can see how it just slides over, but then when it's locked, well, in theory it shouldn't be able to go over that, but I ground it down a little bit too bit, too, uh, too much, so that would lock it in, though. So I'm going to try and show you how the, um how the clip is actually supposed to unlock better 
is I've got a separate action that strips now so I can show you it going through pretty well. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to put in the full rifle because it just gets stuck every time. I mean, it, it just doesn't strip it because there's nothing holding the clip down. So, it's pointless. So, with the uh, receiver off and everything, well, let me get some light. Maybe a little bit too much light. Alright, so there you go. So you can see the central wedge that'll push any clip wire out of the way. And then you can see um, how those guides start angled down. So what happens is the wire actually goes underneath of this edge right here and then it gets pushed and looped around to the center and it'll just go down the central channel so you can see the clip itself if it'll focus you can see you have these riveted tracks for the, uh, the follower and the clip will just go in between that and it will just you know fall right out <clears throat> alright so I've got two cartridge cases in the clip and you can see the loop is uh, is down in the locked position so as I push it well, it kinda just jumps um, let's see if I can get it again you can see the loop, well you can see the silhouette of the loop is just down in the central channel now so I'll probably just pull these off you can see now how it's hanging out in the center And just comes out like this in the unlocked position. So essentially what's happening is when you put the clip in you got the uh, part of the wire vertical and it's locked and as it goes through and under those track guides it'll hit that under portion which will turn it until the loop is in the center so it can go through the center track guide and it will be unlocked so in theory your clip would just fall out of the bottom and you'd have a full magazine um, yeah I don't have any luck with that now I'm assuming since SNS sells these they and or other people have actually gotten them working but so far obviously no luck for me um, if you're interested in picking one of these up, I might suggest you wait until around Christmas time. See if they do another bundle for the Lee and other guns. I got four clips, a McKeever cartridge box reproduction, and a, uh, reproduction Winchester Lee sling with hardware on the end for, I think, one or two hundred. And these clips aren't very cheap, so... I would definitely recommend waiting until they're available as a bundle.